And through that process and month of the month of discussing the mechanics of how to make a business work, we've settled on Dio Technologies Limited mm -hmm. and this product which just seemed to emerge from all the discussions that we made. It was something that just made sense and it was so mm -hmm. cool. I thought, you know what, that's what I'll be doing. Hi, I'm Eve and I'm here with Roger Theophanos and we're going to be discussing um, his work and how he was able to develop a company um, after help from the university. So yeah, welcome to LA1 TV mm -hmm. studio. Thank you very much. It was hard finding you, but I think, uh, I think we've got it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, I came to Lancaster in 2015, September, to start a physics course. And uh, during the course, I chose physics uh, uh, because it was a challenging course, but also was working on the kind of engineering that doesn't restrict you into focusing on one thing. You can do computer science and you'll focus on software or you'll focus on hardware. You can try and do some mechanical or electrical engineering, but when you take a physics course, you're kind of trying to understand all the bits related to technology, which is, I guess, one of the reasons why I chose it. Uh, in terms of having a career in physics, I never thought that I would be uh, academically inclined mm -hmm. later on. But, nonetheless, from the choices that I've had of uh, university degrees, physics just seemed to be the right one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, during those three years of uh, physics, there was always the burning desire to start something of my own. And there were many ideas down the, uh, down the years, and most of them were related to things that you see every day. One of them called uh, unicycle, because I thought, why don't we have a rental uh, um, cycling sharing scheme in Lancaster. It seems to be perfect for it. But down the years, I found uh, the work in progress, which was in one of the newsletters, if I remember correctly, of, uh, of the university. And they were basically saying, well, if you have any ideas and you'd like to try and make them a reality, just walk in and we'll try and help you. So I walked in and I sat down with, uh, I believe it was Rachel the first time I sat, with, I sat down with her. And uh, we just discussed in general, what are my interests, what am I working on, what are the ideas that I have. And we kind of came to a conclusion which was, well, all the ideas sound amazing, but on paper, breaking it down, what are the mechanics inside? And through that process and month after month of discussing the mechanics of how to make a business work, we've settled on Dio Technologies Limited mm -hmm. and this product which just seemed to emerge from all the discussions that we made. It was something that just made sense and it was so mm -hmm. cool. I thought, you know what, that's what I'll be doing. Mm -hmm. And here we are today, two, three years after the, uh, uh, the idea came to be and two years after the incorporation mm -hmm. of the company with the support of the university work in progress. Mm -hmm. We've got a company today and we're actually almost ready to launch. Were there like, any other students that had a similar uh, kind of ideas of how they wanted to progress from university into a career that thought of like similar, similar ideas as you did? It was uh, one of the big uh, helps, seminars. When you sit down with a room of people that are all trying to do their own thing, sometimes you realise they have solved problems that you've not gotten to yet or mm. they found solutions for something that you're dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. So again, the support structure, infrastructure of just saying, I've got a problem with this thing people will come with suggestions straight away. Mm -hmm. You can be the smartest person in the world and you can find all the solutions that you can imagine, that are imaginable to man. But really, at the end of the day, another person might have a different perspective that you don't have at that moment in time. So mm -hmm. just, just ask, just speak to people. What was the um, progress process like after talking with the work in progress team to kind of like developing your mm -hmm. product further? Well, one of the things that uh, struck gold in my mind with uh, the work in progress is um, the, the pitching competitions that they had. Mm -hmm. So I've obviously been working on uh, a couple of ideas at the time, but I never pushed them past the point of theoretical you know, discussion. And then they come and say, well, once every two months or thereabout, we're holding a, uh, a pitch competition. If you win, you'll get 500 pounds for your idea. If you don't win, you'll get uh, a runner-up support package of some sort. One of those um, pitching competitions, uh, they just upped the price and they said, oh, a thousand pounds to help you start mm -hmm. your idea. And I thought, well, you know what, I need to do this. So I sat down and actually worked on a presentation, which watching the video back now, I sometimes cringe. 
mm. but it was a 35, 40 minute presentation of mm -hmm. why this is such a great idea. And if you narrow it down to the important things, I didn't say much in that presentation, but just the, the will to do that work and the general feel of attempting to work things out seemed to be enough to uh, give me my first price, which was a thousand pounds. In hindsight, that's uh, that amount of money doesn't get you too far, but just the incentive initially, mm -hmm. and then the first little steps of creating a website or getting uh, some kind of uh, advice and support from a, a web designer, etc. Mm -hmm. Those little bits that you can do can set you off on a road that could eventually become, you know, two years down the line, launching a product that uh, mm -hmm. we're hoping will disrupt the industry. How, what is the uh, like purpose of the your purpose, product? Yes, going to the uh, interesting things now. <laughs> so Theo Technologies uh, is developing a system called Augment PUI. Mm -hmm. Augment PUI is a platform that allows you to generate and host cloud computers. If you look at the industry right now, everything seems to be moving into the cloud and there's mm. a good reason for that. Centralizing computing becomes so much more efficient than having uh, computers or you know applications running uh, locally. Mm -hmm. So our idea was why are we still purchasing expensive hardware and then running it in our own offices under a desk collecting dust and then with the uh, pandemic happening once people are removed from their offices do they just pick up a box and walk away with it? Do they mm. spend more money to buy a laptop? Will that laptop be enough to do the work that they need to do? Mm. So all these problems uh, just seem to concentrate our focus to one thing which is well why isn't my computer in the cloud why can I not just access it from anywhere our solution is well instead of having a high-end PC under a desk well let's have one in a cloud in a mm -hmm. data center with a big team of engineers trained specifically to make that run as efficiently mm -hmm. as possible and then how do you access that PC that's the next problem do I need to buy a computer to access my computer that seems counterproductive. And that's where our device, uh, the PC Hub, comes in, which is a simple computing module, which is cheap to buy. We currently sell it at 70 pounds, and the, pound, uh, the cost is gonna come down to 50. And you buy a 50 pound high-end performance PC that can do any graphical operation you might need, and then you pay it on a subscription basis, mm. instead of buying it outright with a capital expenditure of, let's say, 3,000 pounds. So how was the process of sort of uh, funding the operation? Um, obviously you had um, the original pitch and you got the initial funding. How did you kind of process that uh, further? The good thing about our team right now, we're a team of five, five people mm -hmm. that just came together from randomized interactions. It's, uh, it's almost like you talk about what you do and what you like doing and people that could contribute or like the idea just seem to gravitate towards it. Uh, and from those discussions, we've built a team of five, which includes software development, cloud architecture, uh, management and uh, marketing, uh, and all the business side of things which I handle. But in terms of funding the project, at some point again, you will need to buy things. You will need to buy mm. software. You will need to buy prototype equipment so you can play with it and make it work. From the work in progress, I was suggested to apply to a, a SMART grant, which is run by Innovate UK, which is a, a government organisation that helps support, fund uh, innovative uh, projects so it can progress the technology and the society in general. Now, uh, that SMART grant is a very competitive competition and it's one of the biggest ones as well, which is why it's so competitive. Um, and I had help from the work in progress to set up an application and send mm. things in, had communication with advisors. Eventually, we did the application and we got 87% uh, uh, of, out of 100 in terms of uh, our application quality. Mm. And we didn't get funded. Yeah, they well, that was enough the, the to set out an application route, which could apply um, which to is other types of competitions. Mm. So uh, I remember this distinctively, actually. Uh, I was sat in a queue during pandemic outside ASDA, just waiting to go in whilst people are coming out to be able to get my uh, weekly shopping. And uh, I thought, well, I'm waiting here, might as well as just browse the internet. Got my phone out and I thought, okay, well, we had the smart, com uh, smart ground competition, which we didn't get any funding on. What other competitions are out there? And I landed on one called the Young Innovators Award. Mm. Speaking back to the work in progress about it, they said, oh, it's quite similar actually, but it's a lot earlier stage, which is what I was at the time. 
just myself with an idea and a lot of paperwork. So uh, I sat down in my car there and then and started the application after the shopping and then continued working on it until the deadline and then submitted it three or four days before. And we got a positive response. They gave us something closer to £15,000 uh, in combination of project funding and partial payroll, you could say. It's a living allowance for mm -hmm. the entrepreneur. And that was the next step to start working on building a team and finding the correct uh, information. And from there, we built our business plan properly with mm -hmm. the help of the team. And we moved on to private investors. So n not everyone knows private, in private investors that have enough money to fund a project of this size. Mm -hmm. But again, through the network, through all the entrepreneurs that we spoke to, through all the different competitions, you start picking up contacts. Mm -hmm. And eventually, uh, one of those contacts was completely unrelated, actually. Um, I spoke to my father, who is the entrepreneur of the family. He's the businessman, mm -hmm. and that's part of my uh, background as well. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm looking for funding, and I've got these £15,000. We need to make it worth something. Mm -hmm. He just mentioned something to my mother, who works, works in a, a hotel in Cyprus, who thought about one of the guests in the hotel, who was some kind of fun funding agent, who then suggested that I should speak to uh, Eagle Labs or Barclays in the UK. Mm. And after speaking to Eagle Labs, I got forwarded to the uh, head of wealth management of Barclays. And he just said, well, I like the presentation. I'd like to invest personally. And that's how we got our first investor. So in terms of uh, the experiences uh, that you're offering students, can you talk a bit about like the demos that yes. you're Yes, well, um, the work in progress has been supportive all along. Mm -hmm. And uh, today they actually offered the, the room, the work in progress room, um, which is in the center of uh, Alexand Alexandra Square, so that we can set up some early days demonstrations. Up to a month or two ago, we were working under technology, which is, you could say, standard in mm -hmm. the industry. Um, and we were creating a, a system that could match, but not overtake what's already in the market. Mm -hmm. And then we had a great breakthrough uh, from our, our engineering team which was uh, our Moonshine uh, streaming protocol, as we call it, um, which is actually a protocol that can stream across the world at that low latency that we're talking about, but at the same time in high quality, which just opened up so many doors because um, uh, our head of marketing has spoken to his network, which was uh, with videographers and uh, video editors mm -hmm. and people in the media market and creative markets. Mm -hmm. And they all said that big businesses, large organizations, um, use systems that are available today mm -hmm. for their everyday work tasks but not when it comes to creative uh, editing and design mm. and the reason for that is because you cannot get a good performance on it mm -hmm. and we had that breakthrough and we had something that they needed we were able to actually achieve what Stadia achieved which is cloud gaming in real time mm -hmm. so our current servers are in Amsterdam and we can stream a high quality 4K real time gaming experience right to our little device here. Mm. So we thought, well, what do students like to do? Well, they, everyone would want to <laughs> get on it. So um, uh, we spoke to the work in progress and they've opened up the room today for us where we can mm -hmm. set up some stations and allow students to just come in and mm. play some games and then give us some feedback on what they've seen. We're not providing a gaming solution. We are providing mm. a cloud desktop which mm. is a high performance desktop in order to be used as either a daily PC or even in enterprise. Now following that, uh, we'll be doing our launch party, like I said before, early December. Mm. Up to then, we'll continuously work on demonstrations within uh, societies, departments, service officers, uh, which we have a few uh, in uh, Lancaster, we're in contact with a few and they would like us to demonstrate what we have. Because at the end of the day, the SMEs that work flexibly gravitate towards a serviced office. They work from home, they work from a rental office, and they can work anywhere they want. So in terms of like your experience and obviously going into employment, into something that is completely new, um, that is a new development in technology, where do you see um, students, um, so any student that is interested in your particular area, uh, what op opportunities are there for them uh, past like university into a career? as long as you are trained in what you enjoy doing mm -hmm. and as long as you keep working on it and try to expand your horizon of skills with 
things that are related to it, you mm. will end up speaking to the right people. Yeah. And more often than not, you will be offered a job before you're even looking for one. One of our main software developers today, uh, he's not been to university. He's, he was in his last year of uh, college and he mm. was going through that process, but he was doing on the side something he enjoyed, which was mm. software engineering. And he ended up working on us, uh, with us on a project, a small little uh, project that we just needed someone to handle whilst we're doing other things. He started working on it, but he came to me personally and he was saying, well, why don't we do this a bit different? Or why don't we do that in, uh, in the system? It will improve performance by this way. So just by speaking about what he enjoys and his suggestions, he landed a job in, uh, in our company. So keep working on what you enjoy, keep speaking to people whilst you do it. And at the end of the day, if you are going to speak to anyone about a career, well, who better to speak to if you're at uni, to the uh, careers people at uni? Yeah. You need to work on the things that your um, uh, future potential employer will be looking for. And those things don't need to be grueling tasks that you just do just to get a job. You mm -hmm. need to work on things that you enjoy and are part of the regime that you're working in. Mm -hmm. If you're a videographer, well, go and make some videos. Mm -hmm. Those videos will speak for themselves. The more you do them, the better you get. The better you are at what you do, the more likely you are to get employed. Now, <laughs> just doing the things you enjoy is uh, it's a nice way of putting it. But sometimes you just don't want to put in the, the work because you have so many other things happening at the same time and that can be very confusing yeah I would say that again working on what you enjoy continuously and with some kind of systematic approach to it makes you more employable than any other person that might be looking for the same job it's all about the attitude and actually just remember all employers just came from where you are mm. at this moment in time I mean, I'm, I'm here now sat being interviewed and I've, I've done a two year work on something that I enjoyed and created a company around it because the more you work towards something you enjoy, the more it becomes what you would like to have in the future. Now, yeah. if you wanted to be working in the most interesting and uh, sought job out there, it doesn't even matter if they have a position opening. You can always just write up a CV, find the right contacts, LinkedIn, you know, the, the internet, you can find mm -hmm. anything you might be looking for. Uh, identify the right person to speak to, send them a message. Say, hello, I am fresh out of uni, I'm enjoying doing this a lot, you have my ideal position in your company and I would like to apply for it. They'll say something like, oh, we don't have an opening right now. You speak to three, four of those companies, one of them will say, well, we don't have an opening, but actually we need some help in our, uh, our dynamic. You might get a job as a contractor, mm -hmm. an outside person that does exactly what you enjoy and gets paid from the company to do what you like doing. Yeah, definitely. And I think that is like the key lesson that goes forward with that. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, I think we've covered um, most of the things I wanted to ask. And yeah, thank you for kind of bringing a perspective for kind of like all university students. Thank you very much um, for having me. Yeah, no, thank you for uh, talking to me and uh, yeah, collaborating with LA1. Um, and yeah, I, well, good luck with the rest of your work <laughs> and... Um, well, feel free to join us at the uh, launch party. <laughs> yeah. It'll be free food, so, you know. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.